I, I think if we're all set, I think we'll get started. This is like all the classes that we have. So like I said, feel free to turn your cameras on if you like. We can see your beautiful faces. Nice to see everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Um, again, thank you for joining us. We've got a really exciting presentation for us today and we are so excited. Thank you for joining us for our second ever Hero Chat Educational Conversations with Nova Scotia Sport Heroes. We had a chat last week with the Halifax Wanderers and went really well. We had some really great questions from the audience, so I hope you are prepared to ask questions to our presenter today. Today we are very excited. We have a two-time Olympian, a five-time medalist at the Pan Am Games twice. We have a world silver medalist in the sport of gymnastics from Halifax, Nova Scotia. We have Ellie Black with us today. Welcome Ellie and thank you very much for taking the time out of your training schedule, your busy schedule, to talk to us today. Hi guys. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. Super excited to talk to you and, and be a part of these chats. I think it's super awesome. So I'm looking forward to it. We've got um, a really cool topic that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk a little about mental health and resilience. And we think it's a very important topic to talk with, especially during the times that we're in. And now that we're getting back into school and doing a, sort of a new routine, but also a different routine, it's important to keep on top of our mental health and how we deal with it and some things that may arise. And, and also listen from um, somebody from right here in Nova Scotia who maybe has gone through some of the same things. So hopefully by the end of the conversation, they can help you a little bit more, uh, help, help you deal with some of these issues that you might see, but also make you feel a little bit more confident in, uh, in your school environment or, you know, if you go or if you're playing sports now or whatever that may be. So let's get right into it. Um, so the topic, like I said, is the importance of mental health and how we cope with it and also how we help others with that. So I'll ask you, Ellie, first, what would you say would be your definition of mental health? Um, I think my definition of mental health is that it's like a state of psychological and emotional well-being. And that doesn't mean that you're happy all the time and everything's going great all the time. But overall, like things are going well, you're going to go through some ups and downs and you kind of learn how to cope with stress, anxiety, um, those obstacles that come. And you, you learn those things through different tools, um, through family, friends, experiences. And so it's just constantly kind of working on this overall feeling um, that, yeah, you're, you're aiming to have uh, a good, a good uh, mental health feeling. Yeah, that's great. A really good definition. And can you recall a time maybe when you felt um, poor mental health? Maybe you were stressed or there was anxiety or worry or fear, anything like that. Was there a time in your life you can recall that you felt some sort of poor mental health? I think there's been, there's been lots of times. Um, you know, the world is a little stressful sometimes. We go through ups and downs a lot. And, and I think that's, that's pretty normal, but it's good to be able to learn how to... Um, cope with those things and handle it. And, and like I said, yeah, you get tools to do that. So a big one for me actually um, in sport was in 2012 when I was preparing for my first Olympic Games, um, the London Olympics. And I was new to senior. I had never done any big international competitions. I was the least experienced on the team. Um, I was the youngest one. These were all such new experiences to me. And I remember being super stressed and anxious and worried and a little self-conscious and just kind of overwhelmed altogether. And, you know, it was, it was a big year. It was pretty scary. So I think for me, that was really a big moment in sport. One of probably my first ones of, of feeling, um, you know, that big kind of like weight mentally on me. Um, and, and it was uh, definitely a learning experience for sure. Yeah, definitely. And was there things that you did to help you deal with that? Talk to somebody, maybe you were reading, maybe you did yoga. I don't know. There, there, like you said, there are different methods. What were sort of the tools that you used? Yeah, so I used a lot of different tools, actually. And, you know, I was younger and I wasn't really sure. So my mom actually helped me out. I talked to my, my coach. Um, I talked to my family. And I was like, hey, I'm just a little bit like overwhelmed. I'm a little bit stressed. You know, what are some things that I can do to help me out? And I actually went and saw a sports psychologist. I've been seeing a sports psychologist for like, I guess, yeah, about like eight years, um, a long time. And she's awesome. Like, 
just to be able to have someone to talk to about it. She gave me a lot of tools like visualization, mindfulness. Um, I think for me, a lot of it was just reminding myself why I was doing, um, you know, why I was doing this, why I was pushing myself to, to try and make the Olympics. And, and at the end of the day, I brought it back to, you know, I do it because I love gymnastics and I want to be doing that. And so it was important to me to kind of bring some of that fun and then that enjoyment and that love into the everyday journey and into the process. So just not being super stressed about, you know, all the what ifs. It was more just kind of being present and enjoying the moment and going through that. And so I did learn like a lot of different tools. And then also I think it was about finding balance. Um, so I spend a lot of time in the gym and I think it's good to clear your head. And so when I leave the gym, I try and do things that I enjoy. Um, so I do reading, I do cooking, I spend time with my family and my friends. I try and be out in nature. I find that's very calming and, and it kind of like, it just resets you. So I tried to do all of these things. Also journaling was one thing, just trying to write down my thoughts and my feelings so I could work through it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of different things um, out there and it just depends on what works for you and so I tried a bunch and I, I definitely found some that maybe didn't work super great for me and then I just continued and found some other things that uh, really helped. That's awesome those are all those are all really great um, initiatives and I think like you said the importance of speaking with somebody like your parents or, or your mental health professional um, was obviously beneficial to you and I'm, I'm sure they would encourage you to continue to do those things um, along this time of training as well. So we kind of talked a little bit about the, the, the poor side of, of mental health or maybe how you felt stressed or anxious, but I'm sure there were lots of times when you felt happy or relaxed or, you know, excited. And, and do you recall a, a time when you had that, that good mental health feeling? Yeah. And yeah, just like in life, there's always times where there's, there's struggles and it's stressful, but also there's times where it's just so great and you get to spend time with your family and friends or you get to do something that you really enjoy doing. And so I guess a recent example for me was uh, in 2019 at the Pan American Games in Peru, um, I actually felt super great. Um, I think going into that competition as an athlete, a lot of the time we're stressed and these situations are, are very stressful for us. And, and I think for me, I definitely perform my best when I'm enjoying and I'm not focusing on the outcome and I'm not trying to put too much pressure on myself. And so that's what I felt like at the Pan American Games. It's a multi-sport event. You get to go out there, you get to compete, but it's not like high stakes. Um, later in the year, we were preparing for world championships where we had to qualify a team for Olympics. So that was way more stressful than this competition. And this competition I could just use to get out there, test out my gymnastics. And my gymnastics felt so good. And I got to spend time with my uh, teammates and just enjoy a fun competition. And so I think, you know, I was really in a good mind space, I think of just feeling positive, um, really enjoying the opportunity and the experience. And, and yeah, just like the circumstances allowed for less stress, which allowed me to just kind of be in the moment and enjoy. Yeah, super important to live in the moment. And I'm sure there are plenty of moments that you've lived in that you can recall, but that's a really good example. Um, now, kind of, again, on the flip side, have you been in the presence of someone, maybe a, a teammate or a friend or a coach or a family member that was experiencing some mental health? And, and if that was, did, did you approach them or how, how did you, did you help them out? What sort of happened there? Yeah. So, and like I said, I've had, I've had times where I've experienced um, some struggles um, and, and not feeling super great. And, and um you know, I, I definitely think there's been times where I've had teammates, even coaches, um, friends, family who have had some ups and downs and, and things that they were working through. And, and I think the best thing for me was just to let them know that I'm here for them. Um, so whether that was a hug, whether that was talking to them, um, being a listening ear, um, or just giving them a pep talk, you know, just letting them know that I was there for them and not overwhelming them, um, giving them their space and allowing them like to approach me if they want or if that's what they were feeling. Um, but whatever they needed or whatever they wanted, just knowing that I was here for them, I think, and you're just being supportive and you're being non non-judgmental. 
So you're just being there as a friend or a family member, someone that they can lean on and you can be that support um, for them and then help them to, you know, if they, if they want to find someone else to talk to you, help them get through that. Um, but just kind of be that support. That's what I was going to say. I think a big part of that is, is being non-judgmental. You never know what other people are going through, but knowing that they are, maybe knowing that they are struggling and just being there for them in any capacity or any way that you can um, in a non-judgment factor and letting them know that I'm here. And if it's not me, that's the right person, then I can help you to find someone else or something like that. Really, really exactly. important to, to not judge um, anybody around you, but just be, be supportive. Um, I raise your hands, people I can see cameras, if anybody follows Ellie on social media. So Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. <laughs> we got a teacher. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, Ellie is, is on social media, of course, and I see a lot of her posts are very positive. Um, we always see you cooking or you're working out or you're hanging with your dogs or whatever it is. You seem to always be smiling. Um, and it's funny because sometimes social media is that it shows, you know, all of the good moments, uh, when you are smiling and when you are happy, but we know that that isn't your life all the time. So how do you go about balancing, balancing that, you know, showing the good side, but maybe also, um, letting people know that you're human and you're, you're not always, you know, in that happy state. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I tend to be a very positive person, um, but that's something that I've, I've kind of like developed and, and gone on a path towards um, that I've learned a lot. Um, I used to not be actually so positive and, and it was just hard for me to kind of pull myself when I was having a hard time and really pick out the positives and look at the good things that were actually happening. And so I try and do that and I try and like live in the moment and be present. Um, but it, yeah, it isn't always easy being positive all the time. And that's not my life all the time. There's definitely days where I'm, I just need to take a cry because I need to feel better. Um, you know, you just got to let those emotions out or you're just feeling slow. You're feeling like it's an off day. You're not feeling super great. Uh, maybe you're upset about something. And, and I think one of the most important things is just being, being yourself um, and being true to you. And so on social media, I post a lot of the great things. I post a lot of the good things that are going on. Um, because I, I also want to inspire, I want to inspire other people, but I try and also post things that, you know, don't always go great. Um, you know, sometimes we have those days where we're not feeling great, or sometimes we have those mistakes that we make, but I think it's important that everyone knows that those are the things we learn from. That's how we grow and develop and get better. And, you know, life isn't always just sun, sunshine and rainbows. There are some ups and downs, but Again, we learn how to go through these things and cope. And, and I think also being able to share that and, and show that, um, you know, high level athletes, um, everyone goes through these struggles and these ups and downs. And so people can relate to that. Um, but I think for me, it's really just working on a balance. So, you know, I allow myself um, time to, to feel my emotions if I'm struggling or give myself space. Um, give myself, um, you know, permission to have downtime, um, not always be going, going, going and, and, and smiling. You know, I think it's important to, to allow yourself that time and allow yourself those feelings. Um, and then also spending time with, with friends and family or talking to people. I think that also helps um, if, you are, if you are going through something. But it's definitely, definitely a balance. Um, and, you know, I try not to dwell too much on the past. I try and live in the present and the future. And sometimes I think um, we can get caught up in things that have already passed and, and spend a lot of energy there. So I think it's good to acknowledge your feelings and spend time um, going through them, but not letting it dwell too long. Um, but yeah, it's definitely just finding about a balance. And I think that takes time um, and through experience and, and trial and error. Yeah, definitely, definitely trial and error. Now, I, I know that sometimes social media can bring a lot of pressure, um, especially this day and age when it is so prominent uh, for students in school. Um, but if you could tell a teenager how they deal with that pressure, what advice would you give? Yeah, so I think this is super a super great topic, especially because we live in a time where technology is all around us. Pretty much everyone's like got access to a computer or a cell phone or an iPad or some kind of like device and 
it surrounds us daily. Um, and, and that's not always easy. And especially when like, say for me, a lot of the time, you know, I use social media to, yeah, hopefully inspire and connect with people, but I try not to let it overwhelm um, and like, just like consume my whole life. I think the biggest thing that I could say to people is disconnect sometimes. It's okay to put your phone down. It's okay to not check your um, Instagram or your Snapchat or whatever you've got going on. Um, I think it's really important to put your phone down and be present. Um, so connect with real, real humans, your friends, your family. Um, I think that's so important. Um, you know, social media isn't real life. Real life is around you. And so I try and do that as, you know, I'll check my phone. I'll make sure I've gotten my emails done. I'll, I'll do my social media check. But I try not to always have it with me or around me because I think it's so important to get back to what's actually important. And that's your family and your friends and your real life and getting outside in nature, making real life memories um, in the real world. I think those are so important. And, you know, I think one big thing too is don't compare yourself to others. I think on social media, that's a really big thing. It's, it's hard not to compare yourself to others because literally everyone is around you at the touch of a swipe or like a, a finger touch. So I think it's really important to, yeah, disconnect sometimes um, and just just be in touch with you. And, and it's easier not to compare yourself because, you know, you're around people who really know you um, and who love you and you enjoy being around. And I think that's important. Those are the people who are going to build you up. And then also I would say on social media, and we kind of chatted about this before, but I think it's important to be you. Um, so I try and be myself all the time on social media. Um, I don't know if anyone does follow me, but on Halloween, I was at the gym and I was like, you know what? I'm going to put on a banana costume and I'm just <laughs> going to do some flips. And I'm, I don't even care what people are going to think. This, I think it's funny. And, you know, so I think it's important not to worry about what other people are going to think. Obviously, you want to present yourself um, in the best way you can, um, but you also want to be true to who you are and not, don't pretend to be something you're not because you are unique, you are beautiful, you are great the way you are, and you don't need to be someone else. So I think on social media, it's good to, to be true to who you are and then also to put your phone down, disconnect, and really connect with the real world and those people who are around you. Um, and that's going to be super beneficial, I think, also for, for your mental health, too, because I know in these past months, everyone spent so much time staring at screens and being either on Zoom or on their phones. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a lot. It's a lot on your brain. So do yourself a favor and just take some time away from it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome advice. My, I always at supper time, it's a rule that there's no phones at the table. So we have that hour to ourselves and to whoever's at the dinner table where we just chat and look each other in the eye. And like you said, have a real conversations with real people around you. And it's super, super Love important it. to, to be in the moment there. So awesome advice. Thank you for that. So my, my last question is actually just more as a fun question and then we'll open it up to the audience. Um, but do you have your most, or can you tell us your most embarrassing moment? Okay, so <laughs> my most embarrassing moment. I don't even know. I don't even know if I have a super embarrassing moment because I'm honestly, I'm pretty embarrassing all the time. So <laughs> I don't get super embarrassed by a lot of things. Um, I would say when I was younger, I think I got a little bit more embarrassed. Now I just roll with it. You know, it is what it is. Yep. <laughs> um, you just try and embrace it all. I, I try and really have a good time, but um, I would definitely say on one of my first big gymnastics trips, um, we went to Japan and I was walking down the street. I was talking to my friends. I wasn't really looking where I was going and I walked into a pole <laughs> and it was in front of like all of our, all of our Japanese friends that we had just made and in front of all my teammates. And I remember being super embarrassed because it didn't hurt, but I like, I did one of those like things that you would yeah. see in like <laughs> comics and I was like walking down the street and I just like bounced off this pole. I'm like falling backwards on the floor in the <laughs> middle of like the public. And I just remember being super embarrassed, but you know, sometimes things like that happen and 
just got to embrace and go with it. Like so. you said, you just roll with it, eh? <laughs> I just roll with it. So I think I don't get super embarrassed um, a lot because I think I just, you know, I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. We're only human. We can only do so much. Sometimes embarrassing things happen. <laughs> That's right. That's a great attitude to have too. Exactly. Thank you for, for sharing those stories, Ellie. Really important. I wanted to open it up to our audience so they could ask some questions for Ellie. A really good time to ask uh, an Olympian anything you want. It doesn't have to be the topic of mental health, but I'm hoping that some of the classes have questions. So if you do, you can either uh, type it in the chat box and I can read it out loud. Or if you'd prefer, you can turn your microphone on and you can ask that way. So if somebody has a question, you can kind of raise your hand or come up to the mic or, or turn your camera on, whatever, whatever you'd like to do. You might have a question right here. I'm excited for this. Uh, now that you are a two-time Olympic gymnast, what are your next goals to achieve in life? Ooh, great question. Great question. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I have been to the Olympics twice. Um, I know this year has been crazy and the Olympics got postponed and we still don't know if those are going to happen next summer or not. Um, we're hopeful, but you know, we're just taking it day by day and, and we're going to wait and see. So that's kind of my next current goal um, is hopefully to go to the Tokyo Olympics um, in the summer of now 2021. Um, and that's what I'm training for at the moment. So I'm just training like it's going to happen. If it happens, it, it does. Great. Um, it's definitely going to look a bit different, but if it doesn't, you know, that's, it's just like life right now. It's, it's hard to predict what's going to happen. So, um, those are kind of my main goals, um, for this year. And then after that, you know, I definitely, um, I want to start coaching a bit. Um, I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to finish gymnastics. I haven't quite decided. Um, but you know, I think when that time is right, I'll know and I want to just do it as long as I possibly can and as long as I'm enjoying it and, and physically capable of it. So maybe I'll start doing a bit of coaching and then um, just kind of getting out in the community and trying different things and seeing what, what I want to do after. I'm not exactly sure what that, that uh, next chapter is going to look like yet. So I'm still trying to work that out. <laughs> because you, you did go to university, right, Ellie? Yeah. Yeah. So you do have a degree as, as well as, um, you know, being a professional athlete. So uh, that must be really hard to balance, but you've got a backup plan, if anything, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I'm not quite finished with the university yet. I'm actually doing a course right now. So I'm still, I'm still picking away at it, but that's kind of the, the, yeah, I guess after, after I'm stopping gymnastics, I'm still going to be picking at it in the meantime, but I'll definitely be finishing that up and then kind of seeing where that leads me in the next chapter. Awesome. Great. Thank you for that great question. I think we have another one here. Hello. What does it feel like being able to do gymnastics so well? Oh, good question. Well, um, it's definitely a great feeling, I think. Um, it's definitely something that's taken me a long time. Uh, it's not just like I, I woke up and I was able to do everything. Um, like anything in life, you have to work hard and you learn um, from your mistakes that you make and then you grow and you improve. So I think it's definitely awesome that I was able to find something that I'm super passionate about and that um, I've been successful at, but not only successful, I just enjoy doing it. And I think that's what, what allows you to be successful in what you do is making sure that you're enjoying what you're doing. So, um, you know, I think it's definitely a good feeling and, and one of the best feelings for me about doing gymnastics is hopefully inspiring um, younger athletes and people around me to find something they're passionate about um, and, and just go for it um, or get involved with gymnastics or get involved with sport. Um, but more than anything, just finding something that you enjoy and you're passionate about and, and just putting your hard work into that. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. We've got a couple in the chat room. So what did it feel like to go to the Olympics for the first time? Oh, it was super scary. I remember I had no clue what to expect. Um, yeah, like I said, I was the one of the youngest. I was definitely the least experienced. I'd been to like maybe one international, maybe two international competitions before I went to the Olympics. So I did it backwards, actually. Like usually girls go to a lot of competitions beforehand. Um, I just ended up, it just worked out that I went to the Olympics first and then I did all the big competitions after that. So um, it was definitely a, a fast, overwhelming roller coaster to get to the Olympics and competing there. But I remember it was probably one of the best feelings 
that I've experienced because I got to represent Canada. I was there with my team. I was on that highest level of competition in sport. And I think in a way, I didn't have high expectations for myself. So I could really just live in that moment and enjoy it and go out there and do the best gymnastics I possibly could um, and just take in the whole experience. And you were only 16, right? You were just in high school? Yeah, I was in high school. Um, I was coming out of grade 10 or grade 11, going into grade 12, and I went to the Olympics. And, you know, so I was very young and yeah, I didn't really know what to expect, but it, it really inspired me to keep pushing myself and, and see what I could achieve after that. That is amazing. That's crazy. You must have been one of the youngest athletes there, I think, not only in gymnastics, but maybe in general. So that's so cool that you yeah. were able to do that. So fun. <laughs> Um, how old were you when you started training? So I guess when you first started gymnastics. So I started gymnastics when I was about six or seven years old. Um, some people start when they're like two or three years old. Um, so I got into it a little bit later, but still young. Um, and I'm 25 now, so I've been doing it for a long time. Um, but I absolutely enjoy it and that's why I continue to do it. So, uh, yeah, I just loved it when I got, got into it when I was younger. Yeah, if you love what you do, why not, why not keep going, right? Exactly. Uh, next one, did anyone inspire you to be a gymnast? And did you always want to become a gymnast? Um, I think for me, I was a kid who had a lot of energy and I was always jumping around. And, you know, I think someone suggested to my parents that they try and put me in gymnastics. <laughs> and... So I just got put in it. I didn't really know about gymnastics before I did it. Um, and once I was in it, I really enjoyed it. And I started watching some other athletes and some other gymnasts. And, you know, there was um, Nadia Kamenic. She's um, like a legend in gymnastics. And she was super inspiring. And then, you know, we've got Sean Johnson and Nasia Lukin when I was a little bit older, who I looked up to. And then we've got some Canadian gymnasts. And actually one, one coach, um, her name's Crystal Gilmore, and she coached me at my gym, and she was an Olympic athlete um, for gymnastics. And I think she was really inspiring because I could connect well with her. We had the same kind of style in gymnastics. We had the same um, strong, funky kind of uh, attitude. And, and um, you know, I could connect well with her. And she coached me. She was one of my first coaches. So I think she, she really... Um, inspired me and made me super excited about gymnastics and and then maybe maybe one day hopefully making the Olympic Games like her. Yeah that's that's awesome and um, your coaches after that were two or two um, co coach one was a coach and one was an athlete in the Hall of Fame correct? Yes yeah so my coach Kiji Yamanaka and um, David Kikuchi and David Kikuchi he was a two-time Olympic um, gymnast as well so he's still currently coaching me. Yeah, both are in the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame, so they're, uh, which is very exciting and uh, super cool that Ellie gets to train with those, those Hall of Fame athletes. Um, are, are there any other questions before we uh, say thank you to Ellie? Those are really great questions, everybody. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. There's, no, there's none other in the uh, chat box. I don't think anyone else coming up to the camera. Um, so I'll, I'll assume, oh, I have another one. Oh, of course, my mouse just froze. Oh, I can, can you see it. can you read that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's um, a good one. Yeah. So, did you ever have any pressure as a female athlete regarding diet and body image? So that's a great question, actually. Um, and I think in the older ways of gymnastics, a lot of the time, um, this would kind of be a topic of discussion and. Luckily, um, things have changed a lot and um, they've gone in such a more positive way. And I think sometimes in sport, um, you know, we train a lot, we, we go through these tough times. Um, and, you know, I think as a female in the, the sport of gymnastics, you have to put on a leotard, you have to go up there, you have to do your routine in front of lots of people. And so definitely sometimes there's been, there's been times, um, you know, where these, these topics have come up and and I think the most important thing is, yeah, I'm an athlete who is kind of a different body type. Um, I'm very strong. I'm very built. Um, you know, I'm not, a, you know, maybe a typical female body, um, but that's what's allowed me to be successful and to do my amazing gymnastics and to do my incredible skills. 
And so my coaches is all, have always, um, you know, been super accepting and, and um, they've been super, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, um, supportive, that's the word. They've been super, super supportive um, towards the way I do my gymnastics and that's gonna help me to be the best I possibly can. So I think for, for everyone out there and especially if you're watching gymnastics these days, it's incredible to watch because you're seeing so many different girls, different body types, different backgrounds, being super successful, being the top athletes in the world. And so I think people are actually changing their mindset and learning, um, learning in a better way that there's not just one body type that is what you, you need to do gymnastics or to do sport or in life. Um, you know, there's not just this one body type that you need to be. Everyone is unique. Everyone is different. And you can be exactly who you are and be super successful at what you're doing. And I think it's just being confident about that and embracing yourself. And that's something that I try and do. Um, so I hope that you guys will all do that. But it's, there's definitely been some topics about that. But for me, I don't like the term dieting so much. All I like is the term balance. I think that's super important with nutrition and being an athlete. I think it's important to balance your lifestyle, but as well balance your diet. As long as you have a healthy, balanced diet, you're eating good foods, um, you know, occasionally you want that cookie, you're going to take that cookie, you're going to eat it, and you're going to have a great time. So I think it's just important to have a good balance. Um, also, knowledge, teaching yourself about good foods that are going to fuel your body, how that affects your body, how that's going to help you with energy. Um, just learning more about the, these situations. And, and as you learn more, you can make those decisions for yourself. So um, definitely a lot, a lot in there. <laughs> in that, answer. Yeah. that was a great answer. I think they might be doing um, nutrition. They might be teaching a little bit more about nutrition in school now. So um, hopefully that sort of knowledge, like you said, will we'll pass on and, and we can, um, yeah, and, and we can be able to learn more about that as kids. So we've got yeah, two more and we'll, we'll ask these two and then we'll, we'll um, wrap it up. Um, so I guess this one is talking about high school because this is when you were on your first competition. But did you ever get pressured to trying drugs or alcohol even though you were an athlete? And if it, you did, how did you, you know, how did you not succumb to that? Yeah, so me growing up, um, I was just raised in a way that that wasn't really something that I was interested in. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing was, yeah, knowledge, um, learning about these things and what, um, you know, how they affect your body. And as an athlete too, having that knowledge of learning that, um, what's this balance going to be? What's this healthy balance going to be? And for me, I just made the decision. I was like, uh, that's something that I don't want to be involved in. Um, you know, I'm focused on my school. I'm focused on my training and I'm happy doing that and I'm enjoying it. Um, I still spent time with my friends. I still hung out with um, uh, school friends outside of gymnastics. Um, but I think for me, definitely, it was just learning about, you know, how these, these um, different things affect my body in a way that, you know, it's not going to be super, super helpful for me as an athlete. And especially as a young person who's still developing, I think it's important to, you know, you have to be good to your body and, and make um, decisions that reflect um, the lifestyle you're living and, and decisions that are going to reflect a good, um, you know, healthy, positive um, journey throughout school and into the next stage of your life. So um, I think for me, it was also just communicating like how I felt about things as well. Um, and again, like it's, it's not non-judgmental, but I think some people, you know, don't be worried about what other people are going to think or do. You have to do your own thing. You have to um, you know, be true to you. And I think sometimes in school, peer pressure can sometimes be there. But um, as long as you're being true to you and whatever you, you, you believe in what you're doing, so me in sport um, and staying, you know, committed to that and, and having that balance um, of still being social and, and being out with my friends, but doing it in a way that I, I um, thought was good and healthy then I think it was, it was a good situation for me. So again, just getting knowledge and learning about these things. I think that's, that's super important when we're young and we don't know a lot. Um, I think that's the best way to equip yourself. Yep, absolutely. So our, our last question is um, based on failure. 
Have you ever experienced failure in a competition? And if so, how do you convince yourself to compete trying or to, to keep trying? Sorry. Yes. I have experienced failure so <laughs> many times in competition. Um, actually at the 2012 Olympics, I was in the vault final and my hand slipped and I like fell right on my face in front of nice. everyone in the world. <laughs> um, and that was not how I wanted to end my Olympics, but you know, I've had lots of competitions where I've fallen off the beam, I've made mistakes, um, I've had things that have happened that I wasn't expecting or I didn't want to happen. And the biggest thing for me when I've had failures or mistakes, and again, this takes practice, um, usually our minds go straight to, this is a bad thing, I've made a mistake, you know, I've, I've failed. It looks at the negatives. You have to change that and be like, okay, I made this mistake, it's happened. How can I learn from this? How can I get better? How can I improve? What is this gonna teach me? And so I think that's the one main important thing that I've learned is when I do make a mistake, obviously I'm upset about it for a little bit, but then I try and flip the table and I try and be like, okay, I made this mistake. Why did I make this mistake? I must've done this, or I wasn't really focused in this way, or, you know, oh, okay, I've learned that I, I need to adjust this when I'm about to do it. So I think it's important that you look at these mistakes and you can actually take a lot away from them and you can grow, you can learn, you get stronger. And the next time, hopefully you won't make the same mistakes because you'll learn from it. So I think failure and mistakes are actually super important. And I think there's something that you shouldn't be too upset about. Um, you know, I think they should be something that you, when it happens, you really try and look at it and learn from it and improve for next time. Yeah, awesome, awesome, great answers. It was so nice to chat with you, Ellie, and everybody, you gave some really good questions. It was uh, you know, really good to see you guys join us today. And I wanna thank Ellie for, for joining us for our, our hero chat. I know she's a, a busy girl and uh, it's really nice to be able to speak to an Olympian and I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation. So thank you, Ellie, thanks again. Yeah, thank you guys. And for people that are on the chat, we are having more hero chats. So stay tuned for other athletes that will be joining us. I'll be sure that your teachers get all of that information. You can check out our social media as well. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been an awesome morning. Thank you guys again. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.